Hello all, welcome to Get Into IAS and in this video we are going to deal with the next lesson that is World Trade Organization or WTO. Fine. So the WTO is an international organization established to promote multilateral trade. So multilateral trade involves the trade between all of the countries. See if there is US and India and there is China, Japan. So all these countries inter-trade along with themselves. So this is called as what? Multilateral trade. If in case some country like North Korea for example are trying not to trade with other countries that is called as protectionist policy and that is very harmful for our world economy and hence an organization like the World Trade Organization is very essential for the world economy. Right? So before WTO could come there was an, another organization called as the GATT. So, General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. So, WTO is the successor of GATT formed in Jan 1, 1995. So, how did WHO form from GATT? See, GATT was formed in 1947. The objective of GATT is free trade among the world countries. So, the objective of World Trade Organization is to promote multilateral trade. Same way, GATT has also an objective that is to promote free trade among the world countries. Now moving to the principles of WTO, we have two main principles of WTO in current affairs. That is the most favored nation principle and the national treatment principle. Okay, So the most favored nation treatment is treat all the nations equally. See, if India is here, India is giving 5% tariff reduction to US, it should give the same amount of tariff reduction to Australia. Fine. So this is called as most favored nation treatment. See what is called as national treatment to treat the imported goods and services equal to the domestic goods and services. See in India we have various kinds of goods and services being produced. All these goods and services should be made equal to the imported goods and services from another country. That is called as national treatment. Next moving to the structure of World Trade Organization. So what is the structure of World Trade Organization? First one is the ministerial conference. Very important. The topmost apex body under the structure of WTO is the ministerial conference. So the ministerial conference is the top level decision making body. So this is what the decision making body. And next it meets once in two years. So in two years it will meet only one time. Fine. And next one is the general council. After the ministerial conference, the next important body is the general council. Okay, So it is functioning under the ministerial conference. It functions under what? The ministerial conference. So the ambassadors or other representatives appointed by the member countries constitute this council. See, there are so many members inside the World Trade Organization. Okay, So if there are 183 countries, there are 183 countries, there will be 183 ambassadors or there may be other representatives from these countries fine so all these people combine together or put together form the general council okay and next one the general council also acts as the dispute settlement body very important see in case if we have any disputes we'll go to the court right supreme court or high court or any other lower court if same way if there is any dispute related to goods or services inside the wto that dispute will go to whom? It will go to the dispute settlement body or the dispute settlement mechanism that the body is following. And trade policy review body. Fine. So this is called otherwise called as what? Dispute settlement body and trade policy review body. It meets many times in a year as and when required. So as a dispute settlement body, it helps the member countries in solving their trade policies adopted by member countries to check if they are compatible with WTO's agreement and their impact on trade. Fine. So if WTO has certain agreements, WTO has various agreements, the other national countries, so the member countries inside WTO should see to that they follow these agreements through the national laws. And hence, if there is any problem arising because of the national law, one country is fighting with another country, this is solved by the dispute settlement body. Fine. And next one, the council for trade in goods is called as goods council. So if country 1 is trading goods with country 2, there is a council for that, okay, to approve. So that is called as council for trade in goods. And next, it looks after the working of the GATT agreement. The council for trade in services is called as service council. Same way like goods, we have it for service also. It looks after implementation of the general agreement on trade in services. That is called as GATS, okay. 
ट्रिप्स ट्रिप्स इज द काउंसिल लुकिंग आफ्टर द इश्यूज रिलेटेड टू ट्रेड रिलेटेड एस्पेक्ट ऑफ इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट सो ट्रिप्स द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ ट्रिप्स इज ट्रेड रिलेटेड एस्पेक्ट ऑफ इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट सो द डिस्प्यूट इन साइड दैट विल बी टेकन केयर ऑफ ट्रिप्स एंड देर आर मेनी वर्किंग कमिटीज इन साइड डब्ल्यू टी ओ फाइन सो वॉट आर द एग्रीमेंट्स इन साइड द डब्ल्यू टी ओ सो वीव डन विद the trips council now we are going to deal with what we are going to deal with the agreements inside wto the very important round of the wto is the uruguay round fine so under this 20 agreements was signed so under the uruguay round 20 agreements was signed the first one is the wto agreement fine what is a wto agreement so wto was established under this agreement so that is why it is called as wto agreement next moving to the agreement on agriculture aoa so under this the agreement on agriculture calls for freeing agricultural trade from one country to another country the agricultural trade should be easeable right so the commitments under this agreement are based on special and differential treatment very important you have to note the point special and differential treatment so what is special and differential treatment see special and differential treatment means flexible and lesser commitment on the part of the developing and less developed countries compared to the developed countries in fulfilling the obligation under this agreement see there are certain trade reductions for the developing countries and the lesser developing countries relating to the agriculture that is what is called a special and differential treatment for the developing and the less developing countries okay next one this agreement also has special safeguard mechanism so there is a mechanism called special safeguard mechanism what is that so special safeguard mechanism means the option available to countries to impose additional duties on imported products when there is a surge in imports or products are imported at lower price so we already saw about the countervailing duty anti dumping duty so all this is called as what special safeguard mechanism for the respective countries so if you don't remember please recall that video okay so the main components of this agreement are market access domestic support or domestic subsidies and export subsidies so the main components of this is market access fine so under the market access we we'll learn what is a market access first so market access provision calls for provision of access to imported agricultural goods in the member country see what is market of access see if in case i am producing wheat in here i need market for the wheat for that the other country's gate should be open that is called as market access that is there inside the wto okay so i'll repeat market access provisions calls for provision of access to imported agricultural goods in the member countries fine so there are two provisions one is tariffication and tariff reduction and the another is minimum market access so one is tariffication and another one is the minimum market access we'll deal with the tariffication fine what is tariffication see tariffication means converting non tariff barriers into tariffs that ensures same level of protection fine see what is tariffication normally laying down tariffs on certain goods and services see for example if india is exporting rice to australia fine there is certain tariffs earlier there was no tariff for this rice now the tariff is 5 percentage so this is called as tariffication fine so minimum access calls for at least minimum of 5 percentage of imported agricultural products in domestic consumption okay so what is minimum access so in case if india is here it has to import at least minimum of 5 percentage from a respective country relating to the agricultural goods okay so these are called as minimum access fine minimum access market next moving to the domestic support or the domestic subsidies okay so under this so we are going to deal with domestic support fine so under this the provision calls for reduction of domestic subsidies that result in lower price of exported products and distort free trade these subsidies called as amber box subsidies so very important for prelims so please take a look at this what are amber box subsidies for example if india is here fine indian government is here our farmers are here okay so our indian government are giving subsidies to the farmers if more amount of subsidies is given the input cost for the farmers will come down okay and hence what the farmers will tend to do he will tend to export more amount of products okay and later what is happening the importing country right the importing country is seeing a surge in the 
import surge in the import of the specific product right because the government over here has given a lot of subsidy and hence the price of this farmer the input cost for this farmer has come down so on the whole he is exporting a lot of product but because of this the importing country is getting affected so importing country is getting affected so this distorts the trade cycle so these subsidies given by the indian government is called as what the amber box subsidies so amber box subsidies normally distort what they distort trade okay now moving to the green box subsidies before that we'll see what is the aggregate measurement of support aggregate measurement of support stands for the total of product specific subsidies and non product specific subsidies provided by a country in a year so over here aggregate means total look at here product specifies subsidies are subsidies given to a particular product for example india is giving subsidy to wheat rice and so on and so forth for example cotton rice etc non product subsidies means are the subsidies given in general for example the fertilizer subsidy right so they are not specific to a product say fertilizer subsidies that benefit all the agriculture so they are giving fertilizer subsidy the farmers get the fertilizer and whatever crop they have laid in their land they use that fertilizer right so those are called as the non product subsidies fine next coming to the aggregate measurement of support so under the calculations of aggregate measurement of support the subsidies are not included when the support is within the de minimis level so what is called as de minimis level very important de minimis level okay de minimis level so under this de minimis is the level here refers to the minimum level prescribed by the agreement on agriculture see on agreement on agriculture wto itself is mentioning you can give 5% of subsidy to the agricultural products 10% of subsidy to the industrial products okay so regard so keeping this in mind if the government gives only 5% subsidy or the 10% subsidy that is not calculated under the aggregate measurement of support fine okay so this these are called as the de minimis support fine and next one apart from the de minimis subsidies following three categories of subsidies are also not included in the calculation of the aggregate measurement of support okay this de minimis is not calculated because the wto it's itself is accepting you can give the subsidy to the respective people right and with along with this de minimis three other subsidies are also not calculated by the wto okay first one is the green box subsidies next one is the special and differential treatment box and the third one is the blue box subsidies so under the green box subsidies what is called as a green box subsidy so green box subsidies are those subsidies which do not distort or distort the free trade of production very minimally see we saw amber box subsidies like it will distort the trade but green box subsidies will not distort the trade okay or distort it very minimally okay the annex 2 of the agreement on agriculture observes domestic support measures for which exemption from the reduction commitments is claimed shall meet the fundamental requirement that they have no or at most minimal trade distorting effects or effects on production fine so what they telling is green box subsidies don't distort the trade both on agriculture or in the production unit okay or they distort it very minimally that's why they are not calculated under the wto fine next coming to the special and differential treatment box snd box so the assistance which is essential for rural development and upliftment of the poor farmers are called as special and differential box subsidies so you are uplifting the rural poor and you are uplifting the farmers also so those are called as special and differential treatment you are giving them a special treatment okay so while green box subsidies are available to all countries special and differential treatment box subsidies are not available to developed countries fine green box is available to all countries but this is not available to the developed countries fine so these subsidies are government assistance to encourage agriculture and rural development which in the nature of rural development programs of developing countries so there are various rural development programs right so for that the government is giving certain amount of subsidy in the developing or the least developed countries and then agricultural investment subsidies is given which are generally available to low income or resource poor producers in the developing countries so normally the special and differential treatment box 
is not provided at the developed country instead it is provided at the where at the developing and the least developed countries next one moving to blue box subsidies so what are called as blue box subsidies so blue box subsidies are direct payments under production limiting programs see for example a country will be like the government of india will be like i will give you subsidy you produce more amount then we can export but under the blue box subsidy the government will be like i'll give you subsidy don't produce so government is telling i'll give you for the loss so you don't produce that if you produce the trade is getting distorted so don't produce instead i will pay you i will give you subsidy for the losses those are called as blue box subsidies fine okay now moving to the export subsidies export subsidies is very normal see the subsidies that subsidize export are called as export subsidies in case if i am an exporter i will get subsidy from the government so my cost of production will come down and i can export a lot of products to the foreign market right so these are direct subsidies given by the government or government agencies either in cash or in kind to producers of agricultural products against export performance and export of non commercial agricultural product at lower price and transport subsidies etc so for the transportation of these products the subsidies will be given and to make the product price lower the subsidies will be given on agriculture so these are called as export subsidies so now moving to the agreement on application of sanitary and phytosanitary measures this one so under this this agreement sets basic rule to ensure food safety and life health of plant and animals in the member country this is normally to safeguard the plants and animals of the country so under this agreement member countries are allowed to set health and hygienic standards of imported products for example we have various health and hygienic standards right like in india we have the fssai right same way when we are exporting a product to another country that country will demand certain cleanliness measures from our country so that is called as agreement on application of sanitary and phytosanitary measures so the standards set aside should be non discriminatory and scientifically justifiable and to the extent required and not prohibitive in nature so this should not be dumping a country in case it should promote trade okay and next one trade related intellectual property rights trips so we already dealt with trips right so under this the intellectual properties are knowledge oriented creations so the so through knowledge a property will be created for that a patent or copyright will be given for the respective person so inventions and innovations so wipo what is wipo world intellectual property organization observes as intellectual property what it is defining the intellectual property as wipo is defining intellectual property as it refers to the creation of the mind it is creation of the mind inventions literary and artistic works and symbols names images and designs used in commerce so all these comes under the intellectual property rights so the intellectual property rights refer to the recognized ownership of the intellectual property to the creator so in case if i am creating something new i will be getting the intellectual property rights ip rights okay to the inventor or the innovator the ownership is ensured through copyrights so they'll give me copyrights or patents for my product so trips cover copyright and related rights trademarks including service marks geographical indicators industrial designs patents layout designs of integrated circuits and then trade secrets first one is the copyright so what is a copyright see over here copyright is related to literary and artistic works like books for example if i publish a book no one is supposed to steal my things from that book same way in youtube if you upload a content your content should not be copied by some other person so that is a copyright issue so the copyright refers to the right conferred on creator author and producer etc right next moving to the trademark trademark refers to the symbol that give unique identity to products of particular producer so if in case i am producing a product okay for that trademark will be given to that product because that product is very special so the trademark acts of 1999 observes as follows trademark means a mark capable of being represented graphically and which is capable of distinguishing the goods or services of one person from those of others and may include shape of goods their packaging and combination of colors so in case if you see the shape of the french fries was being trademarked okay all these are trademark rights 
that comes under the Trademarks Act of 1999. So next is the geographical indication. Under this, the geographical indication denotes the unique identity attached to a particular product for the reason that particular product is produced in a particular geographical location. For example, the first product to get geographical indication is the Darjeeling tea. Okay, it is because of the place. Darjeeling is a place. From there, it is getting the indication. That's why it is called as geographical indication. In it may be natural product or a man-made product. For example, Banaras silk sarees, Coimbatore bed grinder. All these are the products which got the GI tag. Okay, so the geographical indications of goods registration and protection act of 1999 observes geographical indication in relation to goods means an indication which identifies such goods as agricultural goods. For example, I told right, uh, tea is an agricultural good that got geographical indication tag or natural good or a man-made good as originating or manufactured in the territory of the country or a region or locality in the territory where a given quality reputation. There will be a quality for the tea, there will be a reputation for the tea or other characteristics of such goods is essential. Fine. So, these are called as geographical indication. Next, moving to industrial designs. Under this, the designs when recognized as it belongs to anybody. So, I will create a new design that belongs only to me. That is why it is called as the industrial design. Cannot be used by others. So, this design what I created cannot be used by others. So, the Designs Act of 2000 observes design denotes only the feature of shape. So, the shape of the design, the configuration, the pattern, the ornament or the composition of lines or colors applied to any article whether in two dimensional or three dimensional 2D, 3D or both forms by an industrial process or means whether manual, mechanical or chemical separate or combined which in the finished article appeal to and are judged solely by the eye. So in case if I am seeing any design, if a industrial design, an industry is creating a design for itself, okay. For example, take the apple, for example, take the apple symbol. This apple symbol cannot be used by any other industry. So that apple symbol got the industrial design, fine. And next one, patents. Under patents, patent is recognition of invention and confirmment of certain exclusive rights to the inventor. So the exclusive right here refers to the right of production and marketing only by the inventor. So patent is, I have produced the product, so only I can sell and market my product, okay. And if he wishes to authorize others to produce the product using the invention made by him. So in case if someone is willing to sell my product or produce my product at a larger quantity, that person should pay me for the patent I've got, okay. And next one, patents are of two types, namely product patent and the process patent. What is called as the product patent? Product patent is the right to produce the product and the right to authorize others to produce that particular product that is available only to the inventor. Same way, see if in case I am producing a pen today, this pen will be produced only by me or in case if I give access to someone, that person can create this pen, okay. And next one is the process patent means the inventor has sole right regarding the processing method and not for the product. See, there is a process method for creating this pen. That process method alone belongs to me and not this product, okay? So that process I can sell to some other person. So others can produce the product using different processing methods. So in case the same pen can be produced in different ways. So others can produce in different ways, but the process of creating only belongs to me. Fine. So, these are the two kinds of what patents. Next, moving to topographical design. It is the integrated circuit layout design. So, under this, layout design means design of integrated circuits, transistors and other circuits, normally in electronics. So, if recognized and if the rights is conferred to designer, others cannot reproduce it, import it or distribute it. So, it is solely related to the machine work or the electronical work. Next one is the trade secret. So, under the trade secret, trade secret refers to the information regarding process, formula, etc. For example, take KFC chicken's trade secret. So, others are not allowed to make the same kind of chicken, right? Those are called as the trade secrets. So, the WIPO observes, broadly speaking, any confidential business information. So, under the business, KFC is a kind of business, chicken business. So, they have a trade secret, confidential business information, which provides an enterprise a competitive edge 
may be considered a trade secret so that is giving an edge to the company that is making the profit for the company so that is regarded as a confidential matter or a trade secret next trade secrets encompass manufacturing or industrial secrets and commercial secrets everything for example a company may use an efficient method of production that leads to cost reduction so that is a trade secret for that company so next moving to trims so what is trims trims is trade related aspects of investment measures so this was reflected in prelims 2025 so please listen to this carefully what is trims see trims are essentially to promote investment and equality among countries in the sphere of foreign investment see in case if country 1 and country 2 so if there are two countries country 1 and country 2 fine they both are exporting their products like they are exporting certain type of goods they are exporting certain types of uh, take to be the vegetables okay so these two countries should be treated equally by the importing country fine so all these things are explained under trims fine basically to promote investment in certain country and to promote equality within the countries are called as trims okay see it calls for countries to avoid unnecessary conditions attached with foreign investments like employment opportunities for local people see for example if country 1 is telling i will invest in your country this country is demanding this country that is this country country 2 is demanding country 1 to give employment opportunities for the local people so what this country 1 will do it should think because it so it might not know what are the skill sets in the country too so it has to think a lot before investing so all these barriers should be broken down okay and next one to limit the imported contents of products produced for example see this country too will tell you have to use the products inside my country you should limit the imports from outside countries so country 1 will think about the quality of products in country 2 so all that is spoken in where all that is spoken in trims that is trade related aspects of investment measures If country 1 is investing in country 2 all these should be noted down that is the first thing the investment should be promoted and the second thing equality among countries should be promoted fine so this was asked in prelims 2020 next moving to gats gats is opposite of gat fine okay see gats call for liberation of trade in service sector gat is for goods sector but gats is for what service sector so it is a counterpart of gat general agreement on tariffs and trade so which covers merchandise exports see gat is for merchandise exports goods export gats is for service export okay i hope you got the point next one uh, this agreement covers only commercial services only commercial services will be covered under this for example if i am exporting some it companies information and communication technology services those will get covered under the gats okay excluding air transport services and excludes government services so government services are not included inside this gats and air transport is also not included inside this gats which are not in the commercial nature so normally these two are out of the commercial nature fine so the services are classified into four modes see under this under this gats the services are classified into 1 2 and 3 and 4 four modes fine so the mode 1 talks about cross border supply from this border to that border how can we supply services fine so cross border supply is the export of service across border from domestic country like bpo and banking services through e media so it is normally the internet services provided from country 1 to country 2 like bpo or banking fine next second one is mode 2 consumption abroad so mode 2 is consumption abroad consumption abroad refers to the services availed by citizens of one country in another country like foreign tour medical treatment study abroad for example see consumption is we are consuming something so if in case if i want to study in us and uk i'll come under the mode 2 of services okay so under this all the foreign tour medical treatment and the study abroad conditions will come under mode 2 coming to mode 3 commercial presence so under this it denotes the commercial establishments that provide service in foreign country by establishing subsidiary or holding company in a foreign country see in case in country 1 i have a company service company okay service providing company what i will do i will 
So my company will provide all the services in country two. Fine. So this is called as what commercial presence. I am commercially doing my project here. So this gives me certain amount of profit. Same way, I need to take the profit from another country, and hence I am implementing my subsidiary company in country two. Fine. So this is called as mode three, the commercial presence. Next, coming to mode four. Movement of natural persons. So, like how I can move from this country to another country. Fine. So, it signifies the services provided by professionals like doctors, accountants, lawyers, etc., with their presence abroad. So, all these are service providers, right? Doctors, accountants, and lawyers. So, this agreement calls for non-discriminatory, non-prohibitory, and transparent policies. Related to service trade, so all these are called as service trade. See, for example, in country two, there may be less amount of doctors, but in country one, then there may be more amount of doctors. So, in case of a pandemic situation, this country is lagging behind health, and hence the doctors from country one will move to country two. So, all this is taken care under the mode four. Fine. Next one is the trade facilitation agreement. So, under the word trade facilitation, you very well know facilitation means. Easing the trade. Fine. So under this, the trade facilitation agreement contains provision for expediting the movement, release, and clearance of goods, including goods in transit. So what the trade facilitation is telling? It is telling the ease of movement and release and clearance of goods and the goods that are in the process. Fine. So it also sets out measure for effective cooperation between. customs and other appropriate authorities on trade facilitation and customs compliance issues for example if i am exporting from country 1 to country 2 fine i am exporting so in the middle i have to answer to a lot of customs so i have to pay my custom duty i have to answer to the customs authority so all this will be eased in the trade facilitation agreement fine okay now it further contains provisions for technical assistance and capacity building in this area So this agreement was concluded in December 2013 in the Bali Ministerial Conference. So which agreement? The Trade Facilitation Agreement. When was it concluded? Very important. Was concluded in 2013. 2013. Where in the Bali Ministerial Conference? So this is all you have to know about the Trade Facilitation Agreement. Now coming to the WTO rounds. There are two important rounds under WTO. One is the Uruguay round, and next one is the Doha round. Fine. So under the Uruguay round. WTO was born out of what Uruguay round of negotiations, and under WTO, a new round of negotiations was started and named as Doha round. Okay, so this round is concerned with implementation of agreements made in the Uruguay round of negotiations. So all the concerns that was spoken in the Uruguay round, again it is continuing in the Doha round. Fine. So over here, it covers a whole range of issue from agriculture to e-commerce. So in the Doha round, from agriculture to e-commerce, all the things are being spoken here under the Doha round. Fine. Now moving to the related terms in this lesson. First, coming to the peace clause. What is called as a peace clause? See, under the agreement on agriculture, we have an article called as Article 13. So it talks about green box. It talks about export subsidies. It, it talks about product specific subsidies. Okay. See, I'll repeat. The agreement on agriculture has a clause under Article Thirteen of Agreement on Agriculture. So this clause restrains other countries from taking countermeasures against some of the subsidies given, like green box subsidies. I already told you all, green box subsidies are the subsidies which do not distort trade, which do not distort trade or distort at a very minimal level. Okay. See, if in case. India is giving subsidy to our farmers, okay, for exports, and hence the input cost for the farmers will come down, and hence the farmers can export a lot. So these are called as green box subsidies, which do not distort the trade. But there are certain countries which put tariff even for the green box subsidies. But under the WTO rounds, but under the WTO, we have a clause saying green box subsidies. Are not distorting trade, and hence tariffs should not be imposed on those products. Fine, but there are certain countries which impose tariffs on that. So that is spoken over here. Fine, under the peace clause. Fine. So this clause restrains other countries from taking countermeasures against some of the subsidies given, like green box subsidies. This clause also calls for due restraints 
in taking actions against export subsidies and product specific subsidies we already saw what is export subsidies giving subsidies for export for exporting a product is called export subsidies giving subsidies for a specific product for example take cotton take wheat all these are called as specific products okay fine so all these are protected under the peace clause fine so country should not take action against the green box export subsidies and the product specific subsidies fine now coming to the swiss formula the last part of the lesson so the swiss formula is mainly for the tariff reduction fine for what tariff reduction so under the swiss formula it gives the rate of tariff reduction it calls for higher rate of reduction for countries which have higher initial tariff and lower rate for countries which have lower initial tariff see for example a country with 60 percentage tariff has to reduce tariff at a higher rate for example take india if india is implying 60 percentage tariff on certain goods fine it has to reduce its tariff to a maximum extent say 20 percentage and take another country see for example a country with 60 percentage tariff has to reduce its tariff at a higher rate than a country with 30 percentage tariff i told you all india is implementing 60 percentage tariff if china is implementing 30 percentage tariff it can reduce at 20 percentage but the 60 percentage should be reduced drastically to 20 percentage fine because initially there was very high tariff they got a lot of revenue from this tariff but see only 30 percentage over here they'll be getting only a little revenue when comparing to the 60 percentage revenue right so this country has to bring down its tariff to a maximum extent when comparing to this country so that is what is spoken in the swiss formula so it means the former has to reduce its tariff speedily this country has to reduce its tariff speedily when comparing to this country so this is all about the swiss formula and the please clause and with this we come to the end of the lesson world trade organization and uh, thank you for watching and please subscribe to get into ias and also follow our telegram channel the link is being provided in the description box given below thank you for watching